Hey, welcome back to the biography series. Today we're going to share the testimony of a brother with you from India. His wife is named Mani, but his name is Dayala Bhagavanuda. Never mind. Uh, let me read his testimony to you. Uh, he says, I was born... You know what? You need to go follow the link to this brother's page and see if you can pronounce his name. Do it, put it on video. Send it back to me so I know how to do it. He said, I was born into a wealthy family, but after my mother died, <laughs> my father married an evil woman who deceived him and caused him to hate me and cast me out of his presence. I get the idea there's a little bit of a family rift there. I tried to kill myself in the river, but was rescued by a man who showed me Jesus and I came to know that he was a pastor. He led me to Christ and taught me to trust in Jesus and win souls. My wife was from the lower caste, and they are considered the slaves of India. Most Christians are from this caste, and that is why Jesus is known as the slave God. While attending church, Pastor Kumar, who saved my life, also led her to Christ and later introduced us, and we were married. Since that time, and after completing training from my pastor, I've set out to serve the Lord full time. There are now two men in the ministry that I have trained. They are both still helping me in church and in outreach. I have started two churches and have led nearly 200 souls to Christ. All but about five have been baptized. I have no other job than ministry, even though it does not pay me a wage. The people give offerings and tithes as the Bible teaches, but they are desperately poor, earning sometimes grain rather than coins. They tithe from their grain sacks or with eggs or sugar cane. I need to share what they give me with the men who help me as well as to take care of for my own family. This makes life difficult for us, and for this we need someone to help us so that we can be strong and have a good testimony. Like our people, we live in a house made from mud. The roof has supports of bamboo and is covered with palm leaves. These have to be changed every three to five years. And our floor is the earth. It is just one room, and when it's not raining, we cook on a fire outside so the air is clean on the inside where we sleep. This is our custom and our way of life. Yeah, I've been in a lot of churches like this in India and always like it when it comes to be offering time because it's, it's interesting to see what they do. The people generally have two offerings in a church service. First, uh, they'll um, get up off the floor, they sit on the floor, and they'll walk up to where the pastor stands to preach, and they'll give their tithe. And the tithe goes to the church. Then they will sit back down, he'll preach, They'll get up again, they'll come forward, and they'll bring an offering. The offering belongs to the preacher. And usually the offering won't be any coins at all. It'll be, um, um, maybe they have a little plastic bag with rice in it, or an egg, or some like turnip greens or spinach, something that looks like that. Or a little cluster of bananas that may be half ripe and half brown. It's their offering, and that goes to the pastor. Well, that's for him to eat. You know, you can eat a banana, but you can't put it on your, your feet and walk down the street with it. So he still needs money to buy shoes, to buy toothpaste, um, to buy a comb for his wife, to comb her hair with, and so forth. And that's where support comes in. These are poor people, and in a poor Indian village, a pastor is going to get the equivalent of about $4 a month in a salary from his church. And let me tell you, they're doing all they can do to do that because... They just don't make much money. And their living cost, or food, is about 70% of their income. And even at that, they don't have the nutrition you and I have. So we choose to help these men because they do such a tremendous job. The healthier they get, the harder they're able to work. The longer they work, the more they get accomplished. This brother now has led 808 people to Christ, baptized 563 of them. He has evangelized 36 villages. And from that, he has started 20 churches. We got his application in 2009 so it's been far less than a decade and that's what he's been able to do already because of the help of people like you so if you want to help him uh, as i said follow the link at the bottom of the page and do what you can to help and help him and us even more by sharing these videos with your friends the more people we get to watch the more people are praying and giving 
and the more people will come to Christ around the world. Hey, it's in your hands now. I hope you'll take care of it. Thanks.